Welcome, people of Earth, to a discussion of the very recently finaled Halo the Series, the Paramount Plus television program. My name is Jake Terrio, and I will be your host for this evening, or whenever it is that you are watching this video. Um, only evening. Only the, the evening. Locked. You're only allowed to watch it at night. We are going to talk a little bit about, well, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but we're going to talk a little bit first about our experiences with the Halo franchise before we get to talking about the show. Um, Ian Gibson, would you care to start? I remember pirating the Halo game on PC because I couldn't afford it. Otherwise, I didn't have an Xbox. And I remember playing up until the flood because after that, it would crash on my crappy family compact computer. And then I played Halo 2 and 3 and four not five reach so i i I know the halo series pretty well i believe i also read i want to say at least seven or eight of the halo books um that being said i wouldn't consider myself a huge halo fan it's been a long time since i've dived into that lore so i i used to be a halo fan and i still play a little bit with halo infinite but i'm not a huge fan i think that's a good way to describe me kyle what about your halo background um I'd say it's your typical Halo, like, kid who grew up with Halo's experience of Halo. So I first played Halo uh, Combat Evolved on my PC by tricking my mother into thinking that it wasn't violent because the blood was blue and purple. Um, And she was okay with me murdering aliens so long as I wasn't murdering people. That was around, like, 14, 15, I can't really remember. It might have even been earlier than that. Um... And from there, it progressed to playing Halo 2 at my friend Natalie's house. And then we played Halo 3 together co-op. Um, Halo 4 in college. Halo 5 immediately after college. And then uh, I have not yet finished Halo Infinite because I don't like it. Um, and I've also read the books. I think I've read like four or five of the books. Um, I've started the Forerunner trilogy, but, but haven't progressed much. And yeah, I mean, I've played all of the games sans finishing infinite so i'd I'd say it's pretty i'm pretty standard and i've played combat evolved and three and reach and all that stuff multiple multiple times so but uh will what is your experience with halo what's that been uh my experience is we had an xbox i played a lot of halo one uh my brothers are four and six years older than me so they had a lot of friends with xboxes i distinctly remember LAN parties uh, with Xboxes and playing on that Sidewinder, the ice map in Halo 1, um, with the pistols. And then uh, I remember being very scared of that flood level because um, it was terrifying. Uh, and then I remember the day Halo 2 came out, I got home from school. My brothers were already playing it. They were on the Scarab level uh, in Halo 2 when it's in the city in Metropol- Metropolis? Met- Madagascar. <laughs> yeah, Madagascar. Uh, and the zoo animals were there. Halo 3, I remember getting on launch day. Um, uh, ODST, I got early. Uh, Reach, I got late. Uh, 4, I played with my brother. Uh, I've read a bunch of the books. I used to be super into the lore and do a lot of that stuff. Um, 5, I've never touched. Or not touched. I've played a little bit of it. Infinite was fun. Halo Wars is pretty good. Overall, I like Halo. I'd say I'm fairly well-versed in Halo, like, lore and stuff, uh, but not as, like, super, uh, like, recent Master Chief lore stuff, more like expanded universe. Mm -hmm. Jake, what about you? Well, luckily, you don't have to be very versed in the lore, but we'll (laughs) get into that. My experience with Halo, the very first interaction I had, I was aware of Combat Evolved when it came out, Um, But I was in a household with strict limits on screen time and strict limits on game content. So the first interaction I had was Halo 2 at at a youth group LAN party, um, which seemed like an odd game for a youth group to be playing. That's not very Christian of them. No. (laughs) Um, But that was a a couple of times that the first game that I played through myself was actually Reach. um, Because the uh, at a time where I was, uh, these kids that I babysat, um, when their dad was at work and they would come home from school, I would go to the house early <laughs> before they got home from school and I'd play Halo Reach in increments on their oh, Xbox. Nice. <laughs> um, 
and then we'd play you know smash brothers the rest of the day or whatever um but that was the first game that i played through by myself in its entirety and i i loved it i've not played any of the games after that all the way through i've played most of halo 4 i haven't played 5 or infinite i haven't read any of the books but i have watched forward into dawn and i think maybe i watched one episode of the mike coulter um ridley scott produced series um but that's about it i do love the mythos of Halo as a sci-fi property, having absorbed a lot of it from the other games, kind of just through cultural osmosis, it's very much a sci-fi property that checks all my boxes. Um, but I have not, like, so much of the extended universe I haven't touched yet. I'd like to, but I haven't. Um, and uh, that's where I am with Halo. So... Now that we've laid the groundwork for all our experiences with this, there's a new television show, and it's just concluded its first season. Um, let's go back down the order we just went and give your Twitter-sized review of Halo, the series. I would say that Halo is not a good TV show, but it's also not a bad TV show. It is just a TV show. I'm going to I'm going to riff on that a little bit. I would say Halo is so mediocre that it is a bad TV show. There's there's almost nothing more I hate more than mediocrity and Halo has it in spades. Halo the TV show by Showtime presented on Paramount Plus would have been a better television show if it was not in any way associated with the Halo property. It, it does carry a lot of baggage, but to wrap up everything and agree mostly with everything that you all have said, yes, Halo is, um, to my mind, a missed opportunity because it is a, a show that comes from a franchise with such a rich mythos um, to make something so just like the most boilerplate kind of science fiction program you could. Um it was underwhelming and disappointing. But like Ian said, fine from just a general kind of television perspective. Yeah, I think I I was never horribly offended or terribly bored by the show. But at the same time, there were very few moments of genuine enjoyment or excitement in the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I kind of want to explain... Uh, what I mean by my little Twitter sort of thing there, which is I think there are so many things they locked themselves into by being associated with Halo that they stuck with, like making terrible CGI aliens mm. and then didn't stick with other whoa. things. Whoa, whoa, and not whoa, all the minute. aliens were terrible, just some of them interactions uh, with the I, aliens. I feel like of all the CGI in the show... The aliens were the best. <laughs> no, no, I agree with you. I'm just saying you weren't forced to have to do that. Like, if it was any other science fiction property, they could have invented aliens that they could have done in a different way or done humans or something like that. They weren't stuck with a property that they had to do elites and grunts and jackals. You're talking you know, the, sort the of... kind of the Star trek -y, It could have The villains just could have been people with forehead prosthetics rather than fully CGI characters. And I was like, if they were already changing so much about Halo, they could have easily changed, like, the bad guys and made them look different. But I think I, I, that gets away from the point of the thing. That's that's kind of my separation of if this didn't have Halo attached to it, they could have gone a different route with that. And I think it ultimately would have made a better show because they wouldn't have had spent so much money on the CGI. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. They... Even though they've made a Halo show, they still could have gone a very different way with this. Yes, totally, totally, yeah. That's just like a blanket opener. Like, I think I think Halo being associated with this, it, 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 they didn't, I don't think they needed it. I don't think this show needed to be called Halo. I, I, I mean, I, I almost feel the exact opposite in a way, which is that if this show was not Halo, if it was just generic aliens... Everything was identical, but it did not have that IP to lean on. It would have been much worse because I feel like I feel like twenty five to fifty percent of my enjoyment of this show was being like, "Hell yeah, Master Chief! Hell yeah, that's a battle rifle in the background." Oh look, he's got the assault rifle on his back. You know, if that wasn't there, 
this show would be much worse. For me, that that stopped after the first episode. I stopped caring about, hey, that's from the game. Hey, I've used that before. And I was like, why should I be invested in this? The the nostalgia factor, I guess, if we're if we're calling it that, was nice to see, but then you can't rely on that. It's like what Disney does with Star Wars all the time, where they're just like, hey, remember thing? Yeah. Remember person? Remember character? Remember plot line? And then you're not left with much else if you if you don't write anything beyond that. I just want to say, uh, Ian, your point about it being, if the show didn't have the Halo pull, it would be a mediocre show that no one would watch. That's what my point is. Like, I think if your show is leaning so hard on the property to get people to watch the show, then it's not going to be a good show. Sure. I think I, I definitely came into this at the wrong time. Um, being someone who appreciates Halo kind of as a thing... Um, but also, I was coming off the tail of watching just some really good sci-fi shows. I like The Expanse wrapped in December. I had just Stargate. Uh, Star- I've been watching SG One. I watched Stargate Universe. Yes. I just uh, finished watching the Battlestar Galactica reboot. Um, yes. I watched Babylon Five for the first time last year. So uh, I've just been kind of inundated with all this really great classic sci-fi. And then this Halo show just kind of like plopping itself down in front (laughs) of me and every every week being like, what's happening? What's going on? And Kyle and I had talked about this a little bit over Twitter and I think maybe over text or Discord DM or something that it almost felt at times like there were these two competing storylines that in the end never came back together. We were speculating, you know, they've got the storyline with the kid and the storyline with Chief. How's that going to resolve itself? But it just never did. And it was then these, like, two competing shows, one of which was way more interesting than the other. Um, and then I was like, well, why is this nine episodes? Why isn't it six episodes or, or seven episodes? And you just cut out, trim off all the fat. That was the thing that even, you know, you know, Battlestar Galactica, Babylon 5, uh, Stargate, these sprawling 22 episode seasons where you're still, you're interested every, every episode, they're, uh, they're episodic, but they're furthering the plot a little bit, like the overarching plot every time. Um, and then you get something like this, which is nine episodes and still feels like there's so much fat on it that you could just hack away and get a much leaner, tighter show. Let's, let's throw some people under the bus here, which is by far the biggest weakness of the show is the writing room. The writer's room is, it's weak. Like they have just put together like a lot of milk toast uh, characters and dialogue that mm-hmm. doesn't really drive you forward. Like you mentioned uh, a secondary plot that just leads to nothing and is largely unenjoyable. <laughs> L- literally but leads what's to What's happening? <laughs> yeah. What is Sorry, this just, the episode? <laughs> and just a lot of like individual like like in scene by scene, dialogue by dialogue, it just feels like it's eighty percent of the way there. Mm-hmm. And overall, it just none of it, none of it feels very satisfactory. Yeah. Which is super weird for you know there was that whole big variety article that got everybody up in arms a couple of weeks before the show aired, um, for a multitude of reasons. Um, but one of them was that apparently it had gone through like all nine episodes had gone through in total, almost three hundred revisions that like Spielberg had a hand in the approval of some of them to get them to the point that where they shot them, um, which just seems baffling to me that after that many revisions, you still get something that's this flat. Um, but I was telling Will before we started recording, and this was kind of one of my whole points. Uh, I, I was I was coming to the defense of the showrunners before the show aired, and I'm still coming to their defense now in this one regard that, I think they need to have the freedom to make the show they want to make. And then, of course, we have the freedom to be like, yeah, but it's not good. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah, very yeah. good. Because I was about to say, it, but I, it's not I think good. they did because not to open a whole can of worms, but this show is like, it, it is not leaning very heavily on Halo lore. It's It's leaning on the world a bit and broad strokes of it. But it is its own story, and honestly, I really appreciate that. I don't think they did it well, but I appreciate that they, they at least took that shot. We, we talked a couple of weeks or a couple months ago about there's the leaked Alex Garland Halo movie script from the early 2000s. 
And I remember reading that when that leaked, and it was like, yeah, this will make a good action movie. And it was basically just Halo 1 with some minor lore and scene tweaks. And they could have very easily done that with this show. They could have done that into a movie. But they swung for the fences. They missed, but I at least appreciate that they 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 stood up and they said, no, we're going to make major changes. This yeah. is our own story. It is their and own I story. That. <laughs> it seems to me that the, the show that we got was like studio notes the show. Like... This felt like if it went through that many revisions to get it to the point of basically someone's rough draft at, was the shooting script. Like, what was... Like, Spielberg is not a bad filmmaker. Like, he knows... he He's the executive producer, or one of the executive producers. When you start seeing too many EPs on the credits, that's when things get a little get a little rocky so every time i went through the credits i was like how many people are like eping this show but spielberg is who he is as a filmmaker and a storyteller and he knows by and large obviously there are swings and misses but he knows what works and what doesn't and there's so much about this show that just doesn't fundamentally work it just made for a very wild like inconsistent viewing uh process and I just, I, I never, there was, <laughs> I wrote this down in my notes. It was like the lighting and grading makes everything feel flat. Um, the Egyptian looking prophet scene looked like a bunch of action figures standing on a set. Like they, they do this, like they do this like dolly pass of the elites and it literally, they look plastic. Like That's, they look like action that figures. Set, that set piece was my least favorite of the whole show, which was, was not was, good for it being the finale. Every single goddamn time a Spartan jumped, it looked like Super Mario Brothers oh, it was, CG. The grav- it was just the, bad. The physics, woo-hoo! the weight yeah. was not was like, right. Woo! Yeah, it was, it was a woohoo! It was when, a woohoo um, jump. It when, was... when Kai's jumping onto Halsey's ship in that finale oh, episode, oh, that oh, shot, like, oh. I, I grimaced. Yeah. Some, <laughs> some people were like, that was the best shot in the entire show, mm, and I was no. like, what are you watching? The running was great. I was into the running, but as soon as the she left the ground, the, land, I was the like, landing oh. is when you're like, the, just the weight feels wrong. Like the internal logic of the show doesn't feel like it's being followed by the plot. Like there is, there are scenes that are thrown together for what feels like the cinematic effect that they'll have on the audience, and not the connective tissue that the story needs to make them sort of work together cohesively. And I just. I, I don't know. I, I don't mean to steer the conversation away, but for me, I feel like they had so many really good ideas in this script. It was just almost always the execution on them mm-hmm. that failed. In the game, I feel like Master Chief shows, even though he's a cold, dead, heartless Spartan, he can still show like comedy or emotion or he cares about Cortana. He cares about the humans he's saving. He cares about Captain Keys, all that sort of stuff. Versus in the show, it's like, oh, I got to remove my emotion chip. Now I can feel emotions. Oh, the girl Spartan put paint in her hair. She removed her emotion chip. She it was, feels yeah, emotions. It's called it was, better it storytelling, story Will. It's called, they didn't do it well, but that is 10 times better storytelling than, than shitty generic video game protagonists. No, but I'm just saying. And then at the end, the other Spartans who still have their emotion chips are like, oh, we're starting to feel emotions too. And it's like, no, you're not. They're putting this stupid thing in here. Similarly, if I was to step back and play Script Doctor just for a second, I think there are some just very minor... It's going to take you hours. I know. Just some, <laughs> but some minor structural things that I think would make it a little bit better. We're deviating so much from the Chief of the Games, we're just going to, you know, don't worry about that. It's a new Chief. He's got new stuff going on. I don't mind the idea of him having some special connection or some special ability to... Uh, interact with the alien artifacts. I kind of like that. But I think if that's the case... That's Halo lore. Sure. And we're sticking with the ki- the you know kidnapping his children storyline. We get rid of the um, the you know the whole magical uh, you know yeah. get just, yeah. just, just, just get rid of all that. We don't need it. Keep the uh, McKee has been a prisoner of the Covenant. I like that. She also has a special connection to the artifact, but it's because she's Chief's sister who was kidnapped later by the Covenant after that. I think that would be a a, a simple fix. And then, of course, you don't have a bunch of that weird chemistry in the eighth episode. Have you seen Game of Thrones? We can have some, some, some of that going on. But we're not going to. I thought it was weird. At no point did they address that I like I get Cortana in both Halo lore is special because she's more she's Halsey's AI 
has more emotion, is smarter. But at no point did they address that other AIs at all exist, which is a she was huge the, she was the only thing. One. Is huge thing in Halo. Well, what you were saying with the sort of underutilization of AI across the show, just where it's basically just Cortana, I kind of got that with the Covenant. And I I started thinking about it because the Covenant are not in every episode. Like they're they're very sparingly used. And obviously it's expensive to pump that much VFX into, into animating those types of characters. That's why a lot of the shots are wide shots of them in like full armor and you don't get so many close-ups of, of like the elite's faces and stuff. I think that there's like one or two shots in the very first episode where um, it looks really good. Like I, I thought the animation on them was, was done really All well. All the money the went to the profits. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And um, yeah, it looked fantastic. But you really only get, aside from a few little tiny things in, in a few other episodes, the, the, the first episode has the major sort of battle that happens with the elites and... Uh, the grunts and stuff, and then you have the stuff at the end, which is just like it. It I thought that it really lessened the fear factor that the Covenant should have struck into humans, and I didn't get the sort of sense that there was an impending threat from them, like invading. Like they didn't talk. They they kind of they referenced um, not Reach City, but one of the other cities or whatever, one of the other planets getting glassed, but they didn't know what it. They didn't know like what was happening. They just knew that. It was burning, um, which was kind of cool. But like at the same time, I didn't feel it. They kind of just dismissed it. They were like, oh, yeah, there's like 20 million people just died. And they're like, well, OK, we got this artifact. So we got to go figure out what this is. And it was like, are we not sending like ships to like see what's going on there? And I think the threat of the the main enemy of the show is supposed to be the Covenant, or that's what they lead you to believe. But like they're so far removed from what the story focuses on they're like tangential but they're tangential to a point that i didn't feel threatened by them until it was like hey here's like a thousand elites that they have to shoot with pistols from like 600 yards away there was so much that it seemed like they were like we'll do that in season two we'll build to that yeah. in season two and so much of it was just like the the like the inner office politics of the unsc oh my god Halsey me. just I... being generally unethical um where the most interesting tough stuff to me was the Spartans kind of learning about their humanity. I, I loved the episode where Chief's just walking through the city and almost petting that dog. Um, but then it just, there was all this other, just like we said earlier, there was just too much stuff and too many things happening and the right things weren't happening. It should have been like starship troopers i'm from buenos aires and i say <laughs> kill them all I say, kill them all <laughs> um and there's always like they i mean verhoven is doing like yeah. the intercut newsreels and stuff but yeah if there's just like you know like banners hanging in the city they're like join the fight like um like emily blunt in um edge of tomorrow or you know stuff playing on the tv where we're always getting these reminders that there is this huge war happening at the edge of known space or whatever but yeah we're just getting it so few and far between that we're like okay the covenant whatever they're looking for the treasure too they were they were trying to play it off as like people don't know about the covenant yet even though the unsc is fighting it because like those like people... they definitely know about the covenant. They're well, translating Sangheili. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> no, no, they're they, like the the rebels and, and the, and yeah, the, the rebels didn't know about the covenant. But oh, sure. also, like the rebel thing and the UNSC thing is is a pretty big thing in the books pre the contact harvest of uh, covenant. So like I'm I see them playing that up a little bit. But like as soon as those covenant hit, at least in the books and stuff. It's like humanity versus covenant. Like that stuff's really put on ice. There's some of that rebellion stuff, but not to that sort of point where they're like, we need the, the unobtainium, make it. <laughs> yeah, sort of but thing. I mean, I I just got to put my foot down here. That's an instance of the television show making the better storytelling choice than the books. Because again, the show didn't execute on it well, but then presenting the idea of like, hey, just because these aliens show up and all you're hearing that is from your enemy that pumps out propaganda all the time and they say that's the reason you should put down your weapons, that doesn't mean you put down your weapons. That's an interesting idea. Again, they didn't execute on it well, but 
I think that's much more interesting and better storytelling than oh aliens showed up all of a sudden humanity is fine. You can give them you can give them a little bit of grace for making that choice, but you have to fault them for not executing it well. Like you can have good intentions, but if the end product is not good, it doesn't matter what the intentions were. And I I, I don't know. I also feel like the <laughs> The, the the fact that the rebel plot line just falls off completely and other than going with Quan into the desert to see the mystics because there's always mystics in deserts did you guys know that we got that in book of boba fett we got that here we got it in dune and then we immediately jump back to the spartans and it's like why did we do that why did you waste probably the 20 to 25 million dollars it took to produce that i mean i, I, don't, I don't know maybe, maybe maybe that was like a five million i think i, re- I think i read that <laughs> mandalorian was 15 million an episode and i think this was nine or ten okay estimated still a lot of money for a bad episode yeah what we've all kind of been saying here is it was just not executed well there were a lot of ideas that some of which were good some of which were bad that never kind of coalesced into much of anything like like the rebel story if we're you know looking at the lore the timeline of the games the lore of the books the you know all the extended universe rebel stuff cool let's then just do that for a season or just do the covenant stuff for a season but to kind of like not really do any of them for a whole season just meant that we you know we got nine episodes and then at the end it's like okay what's What's going to happen now? Are they going to actually go to the Halo in season two? I hope Is so. It, are we going to see the fall of Reach? Like, where, where, what's the next thing? Um, and do we care? I, I kind of wanted to hit, because uh, I did have a couple notes that I, I put a heading saying good stuff. I kind of mm. wanted to hit this just to see if, if we kind of agreed on this. Sure. And I thought the, the profits and the CGI of the profits was great. great. Yes. I thought they were Fantastic. awesome. I thought yeah, the yes. way they communicated, the whole mercy regret, I think they're great. Their chair is super cute. The props mostly looked okay. The production um, design was good, I think, on the whole. Um, I thought I thought Captain Keys, the actor, and a little bit of his character was cool. I thought he was a pretty good actor. He's in Killing Eve, and he's even, he's even better in that. Oh, you're right. That's what I recognize yeah. him from, yeah. I thought the brute sizing was pretty good. Versus Master Chief, it really it it and especially that scene where the guy's holding Master Chief up made me think of that Halo Three diorama where he's holding Chief the up. The Believe commercial, yeah, the Believe yes. one, the I best Halo really movie. Uh, this last one, I'm not saying it was well written. I'm not saying it wasn't foreshadowed. I'm saying I'm an idiot. But the Halsey clone thing got me. I did. It got it me did, too. It got me too. Um, I thought that was really clever and well done. But I think I think let's keep going with some positive stuff. There were my two favorite scenes in the show was number one, the Cortana installation scene was like that was a very good sequence. Uh, it just felt like technical, but then also some body horror. And it's like cutting between different like here's, you know, graphical imagery. And then we're going to do the actual insert and a lot of good prop work with like, you know, all the different props that they're picking up and handling. I really like that one. That one felt it felt very well put together, and I think that's why it stood out so much compared to the rest of the show. Uh, another one was um, the scene where Master Chief is in the house, and he's having a bunch of flashbacks. I like that, his, too. Yeah, and his younger self, and then they start to over the, the superimpose him in a way where it's Master Chief in full armor, like like looking over his younger self. That whole sequence was very well done. And then finally, uh, just an incredible piece of body horror when McKee rips her fingernail off and I was that was very well done. That was whoo, 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 that was that was good. I they they do they do a similar thing um in District Nine where like Oh uh, that movie's so he's, good. He starts transforming and like oh I hate stuff like that. It's so good. You should all watch District Nine. That's a really good movie. From a guy who also almost made a Halo movie. I I mentioned it earlier, but my favorite sequence is when <laughs> after Chiefs removed his little chip and he's just mm-hmm. walking around the city and suddenly yeah. experiencing all these things for the first time. He's listening to people play music in the park. He's, you know, watching, you know, young couples walking along the promenade. He's seeing this dog that he doesn't pet, but he should have petted that dog. Is that the one that's um, interspersed with, with Kai doing the, the hair grease? I think that's a, a ne- the next episode or maybe the one after that. Because she yeah, noticed that, that was that a good moment as well. Differently. Yeah, I, I yeah. think my two... F- 
favorite characters were Kai and Chief for the for that reason that they're the the first two to be like okay something's a little off what's off let me adjust this thing about myself oh my goodness look at all this stuff that I've never experienced before um and i actually thought she was a stronger character than chief because she had a little bit more of an arc she had an arc um, yeah (laughs) to go through um and that actress i don't i wasn't familiar with her work before this but she did a great job with the material that she was given my other favorite sequence was in that finale episode when they're having to cross through the competing gravitational fields to get to um the Covenant planet, that was very reminiscent of Interstellar and a lot of other sci-fi that I like, Um, just because it's a very cool kind of, you know, high concept sci-fi sequence. Yeah, I, this this is sort of, I don't, I honestly don't have a favorite part because I was so just level on, on everything. I just didn't care. I was extremely disappointed that they didn't utilize the music better. Um, and there were there were very weird choices for the the score that they did have where it felt really inconsistent with like sometimes it would go more electronic and then other times it would be more like kind of classic orchestra and then towards the end they started doing this weird like vangelis like synth kind of thing like the the tonality shifted a lot and the parts where Marty O'Donnell's original score did come in where it, it tended to be the more action oriented parts. And I, I have like a pretty nice sound system um, and it was mixed so far beneath all of like the, the sound effects and everything that it was actually hard to like enjoy it because it, it didn't have that full pulse pounding sort of like action um, theming that, that the games do. And I, I was, I was disappointed. Did they ever use, like, I know they used like the choral, the, the choral motif a couple of times, but did they ever use that? Da, 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 da? Cause yeah. I never heard it all the time. It's in, in the all last the time. <laughs> it's in, it's in the last then, episode. Yeah, it's mixed so poorly that I never noticed yeah. it. <laughs> Music does so much to add emotionality to whatever's on screen. And if you just have, again, like it it just, the music that they did have felt so uninspired. So it was like, I didn't, there was nothing behind what I was seeing to sort of drive me to be like, oh, this is an emotional scene. I mean, that was apparent from the horrible writing, but like, I don't know. Yeah, Halo is one of those series that I think similar to something like a Star Wars, where the music of John Williams is in the dna of the storytelling at this point that there's there's these these songs and these musical motifs that are so ingrained in that world that it feels weird that they're not there so one more thing that i really like this is a bit of a tangent is watching the soren scenes where he's basically a pirate with his own like renegade station that he runs Again, not very well a done. Horribly and, designed and, space colony. And not very well not very well written either. No, I thought it I thought it was well designed. Like that's, the that's transportation like almost fantasy system sci-fi. was not well designed. You, get, you run out of slack it's on not, one of those wires and sci-fi. puffs and your your little cars just zipping no. off into space. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I thought it was very creative and interesting. Creative and yes. that got me that got me thinking about that felt a lot like Mass Effect. I, I think they just barely touched on something good there. Um, they really don't deserve any credit for that, but it, it did at least inspire something <laughs> in me to think about a completely separate sci-fi property that they're competing with. After that episode, Kyle and I were were chatting, like, just the con- the concept of it was so bizarre to me, and there's so many... M- points at which it could go wrong like i it's I, if, fantasy sci-fi i know like but at some off, point you know, i think catching the rail also yeah also because i had been watching so much kind of hard sci-fi that i was like okay it's on rails and then it's on a cable and then it's in zero g and it has to grab onto another cable and then go, i'm like there's i would never get in one of these things <laughs> yeah. if i lived on this colony <laughs> it just seems like so much could go wrong this is such a BS argument, though, because you think about the Spartan, and it's like, no, it's just I a know. human, they pump full of shitload of drugs, and now they can it's, lift 5,000 pounds, and but it's that's, like, come on. That's to say, then, about the execution and about the, the quality of the writing of everything else, that I'm getting hung up on this cable car flying through <laughs> yeah, space, yeah. and the improbability of its design. to accept it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to bring things to a conclusion, I'm almost thinking, would you recommend this show... And are you going to watch season two slash hopes for season two? I I would not recommend the show unless you you 
have already watched The Expanse and every every available science fiction show for the past 30 years and you're you're really just dying for more i wouldn't recommend it i am going to watch season two because i cannot stop looking at a train wreck i just i have to i have to and i i will always give a show that like they're pumping money into a shot will would you recommend this show and will you watch season two i would not recommend the show at all um it, I only watched it because we were doing this thing, and I only remembered yesterday, uh, and I skipped. Well, how many episodes so. did you watch? Did we I talk watched, about that? I watched eight episodes of the nine. Um, if I would only watch season two, if we were gonna do this again, and I could get Paramount Plus free again. Ian, thoughts and feelings, recommendations. I would recommend the show. If you are a Halo fan, um, not because I necessarily, th- not necessarily because I think it's 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 good or anything. Like I said, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a very middling show. But the thing is, watching this show has made me realize. I don't want to say realize, but kind of reiterated the thing that I try not to think about, which is that ninety nine point nine percent of video game storylines are very generic and uninteresting and uninspired and very like status quo. And seeing the Halo TV show come in and be like, hey, uh, we should really talk about the Spartans and how that's kind of a fucked up program. And, hey, we should really talk about, like, that whole Cortana Master Chief relationship and how that's kind of going. And really introducing all these interesting concepts. Like, for example, we talked about the Rebels are just completely missing from the video games because we assume aliens show up and the Rebels go away. And that's not, that doesn't seem very realistic or interesting. So, again, the show, not great at execution, but it is taking the world of Halo and fleshing it out so much more and so much more intelligently and opening so many more moral, ethical, political questions than the video games ever have. And I think that alone is worth watching if you're a Halo fan. Uh, in terms of season two, yeah, sure, I'll watch season two, man. Similar to Kyle, I will only recommend this if you have exhausted every other science fiction property. Because there and there's stuff that even you know on a on a different scale. Like if you want to watch uh, a great movie about a spacefaring military going to battle against uh, uh, impossible, un- like formidable force, watch Starship Troopers. Um, if you want to watch something or or aliens, if you want to watch something about rebel factions fighting against a greater enemy, watch Star Wars. But let's but let's be clear. Let's be clear. People are not watching Halo because it's sci-fi. They're watching Halo because it's Halo. Because it's Halo. I don't think it has crossover appeal to people who don't like sci-fi. But but what my point is my point is I think trying to judge this against other sci-fi shows and saying, is it a good enough sci-fi show to watch over these other sci-fi shows is very disingenuous when the entire show is built around a specific IP. It's marketed to that IP. They had Paramount Plus cast singing the Halo theme around a warthog just to promote the show and network. So it's not really, are you a sci-fi fan? It's, are you a Halo fan? I think that's the better way looking at it. Sure. Well, then in, in that case, if you're a Halo fan and you have not watched this show yet, rewatch forward unto dawn because it's yes. much better yes. i agree to that there are better halo yeah in regards to season two i will probably watch it but i am a sucker for anything that has a space faring setting um and like kyle said i'll uh you know i'll watch an episode and you know even if i don't like it i'll probably stick with it because i'm i don't know i i for a long time now have felt like I can still learn things from a filmmaking perspective from stuff that I don't enjoy. Cause that's to people who may watch this channel regularly or may not. Um, I come from a filmmaking background. I've written stuff, none of which has been produced except for, you know, student films and whatnot. Um, but I, I do try to look at it all with that more objective lens looking at things like the way the story is told, how the characters interact with one another, not just, is this a good Halo story, quote-unquote, where I think that's where a lot of 
fans of the series are getting hung up on like, oh, it's not my Master Chief. It's not whatever. I'm like, who cares? Is it a good story well told? And this isn't. And I don't necessarily have faith that season two will be either, but I will still watch it. Those are my thoughts. Honestly, just final thing. Master Chief having sex, they led up to it. It wasn't that big of a surprise. It didn't feel like that big of a deal. It was just like, okay, well, so what? I don't know why people were losing their goddamn mind over it. I think it, that that comes back down to people people coming at this with a different critical lens of does this is this a good reflection of the chief we've come to know from the yes. games? Rather than is and, it does it make sense for the character in the show? Um, yeah, and the chief's a virgin. We've been rambling about the Halo show for a long time. You may have clicked away from this 45 to 50 minutes ago, um, or however long this ends up being after we trim it down. Uh, Subpixel is what we are. If everybody would like to go down the list and knock out your social channels, what are they, Ian? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson, where I tweet about Mexican pizzas and Gundam. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kyle of the Beard, where I tweet about nothing interesting. So you don't you don't need to follow me there. It's fine. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270, where I tweet about big people. I am Jake Terrio at underscore Jake Terrio. We are Subpixel Team at Subpixel Team on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, I believe. Somebody and correct TikTok. me if I'm wrong. Yes. Uh, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Twitch, and Instagram. Twitch and, and Instagram. And LinkedIn, too. And LinkedIn. www.subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our YouTube channel, MySpace. or you can search Subpixel on YouTube and probably find a video that we've produced. Um, this has been our discussion of Halo the Series. Thank you for listening. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Tell us what you thought and how wrong we are. Thank you. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.